SIS. That's on our radar. The company has announced an investment of up to 10 crore rupees in Agarsha Senior Care, an integrated elder care platform. We have Dheerat Singh, who's the CEO of the company, joining in to discuss this and a lot more about business as well. Thanks a lot, Dheeraj, for joining in. Um, you know, you, you, you bought about 4% stake for 10 crores, valuing the company at 250 crores. Just wanted to understand your rationale for this and why start with such a small amount? What's the upside here? What's the kind of scalability that you're looking at? So, Imoha uh, is India's largest elderly care services company. So, it clearly is the market leader. And uh, it currently has 66,000 active uh, elders, out of whom 45,000 are paying elders. And this is growing at a compounded rate of almost 7,500% year on year. Um, for us as SIS, we see this as a proxy play on the healthcare uh, segment. We believe we will ride similar proxy plays on residential um, infrastructure as India's overall growth happens uh, over the next few years. So SIS, we manage the largest number of hospitals in India as facility managers. Um, as an extension from the care that is provided in the hospitals, we want to get into the homes and provide that same service. It is also a B2C play for us. Uh, an extension of our business called VProtect Alarm Monitoring and Response which is India's largest B2C security services provider. There's a very strong synergy of the VProtect and Imoha business, and we see a rapid expansion opportunity and synergies for both sides. Similarly, for example, in just um, Gurgaon itself, we manage 125 condominiums. All of them have a very large growing segment of elderly population. Imoha is already present in many of these condominiums, as a separate uh, kiosk, providing the services required for the elderly care people. And there again, there's a lot of synergy that uh, we see. Apart from that, there are many other services, right from our pest management. Right, you know, that's that's exactly what brings me to my question, uh, Mr. Singh, then why just 4% stake here? You could have gone ahead with a much higher stake. Uh, you obviously have the bandwidth and it's 250 crores you valued that company at. What's the opportunity here for you to upsize this? So we retain that option and we will be actively involved in the business and uh, at the time when it's we see it uh, achieve the scale and the fitment with our overall mainstream business, we will definitely consider that option. Is there a timeline though, Mr. Singh, that you plan on taking the stake higher to say 8, 10, 12 percent after a specific duration or time of time or is it conditional to the milestones that this company achieves after this first bit is completed? It is conditional to the milestones. As is obvious at this stage, the EBITDA numbers would not make sense for SIS to be uh, upping the stake. But uh, we expect over the next uh, couple of years time, there will be enough merit for us to look at it uh, for hiking a stake. And what valuations would it be done at? Because I mean, that brings a, another overhang of uh, some money going out of the company as you increase your stake, right? Milestones would be achieved. The valuation currently is 250 crores to the company. At what value are you looking to up it? Uh, we will have a preferential um, entry valuation at that time. But of course, it will depend on the growth that uh, the business overall achieves over the next couple of years' time. All right. Uh, so we'll uh, you know, uh, talk about that bridge when we come to it. Uh, let's talk about the other part of the business itself. Uh, w w what about uh, your growth in this year and the outlook for the next year because of the first nine months which are reported publicly the growth has been just about 9.3 percent which is much lower than your historic growth run rate so what have you done in the fourth quarter so far and the outlook for fi25 if you must so we maintain that we will be achieving on an average a growth of 15 percent on the revenue and EBITDA side and our EBITDA definitely has grown to that level as well as on the EBITDA margin percentage. So our EBITDA margin percentage in the security business has gone upwards of 6%, which was a, uh, at the pre-COVID level. And the other segments are following the trend. So overall, the entire EBITDA percentage has grown for the group, which had been uh, our main focus. The second focus was on our uh, cash collection, which Q4, we've seen uh, very encouraging trends and uh, when we announce the results, hopefully we'll be able to share that. 
For the next year, FI25, we see a very strong growth opportunity in all our segments. And uh, that will lay the platform for our vision 25 to 30 that we are working upon right now. So does all your segments include the security solutions business as well? Because the international business of that aspect of your company, the revenue growth has been sluggish. The margins have not seen a lot of improvement. There was also downsizing of one of the contracts from one of the customers and the loss of a contract in Australia as well. What are the trends that you are seeing for this particular business going into the next year, Mr. Singh? So international business um, has remained a steady business. It is not a business that will deliver very high revenue growth, but it is in the high uh, single digits. Uh, the EBITDA is also not as high as the Indian market. But if you look at the other side of the balance sheet or the DSO, the working capital, it's much uh, more attractive than the Indian market. So it's a good balance. We see the growth uh, in both the revenues and EBITDA and our focus remaining on the Indian market is already at about 70% EBITDA contribution from the India business and that will continue to grow. Uh, apart from that, we are beginning to look more, more aggressively on the inorganic side, the m and play and um, we hope to announce a few things in the Indian market very soon. All right, we'll await those announcements. Uh, you know, just two questions. One, you said that FI25 growth will be a lot better. It'll set the platform for the vision 2025 to 2030. So I just wanted to know what would be the broad contours of that vision? Where do you see the company in terms of revenue margins, revenue mix by 2030? You're working on that. And uh, in light of that, what are the expectations for FI25? You could quantify that for us. I don't think I'll be able to forecast the exact numbers, but uh, as an overall guidance, we will focus on the three metrics, uh, the revenue EBITDA growth of about 15%. Uh, we want to focus on the ROSI and ROI metric, which we hope to continue at the 15 to 20%, and the OCF to EBITDA ratio at 50 to 60%. These are the three metrics that uh, we want to pursue and we are confident of delivering over the next few years. What about debt? Mr. Singh, your net debt around 1,058 crores. Do you plan on bringing that number down as well going into FY25? As of now too, if you look at the debt EBITDA ratio, it is not that high. It is below 2, which is uh, uh, at par with the industry standards or even below that. But our effort has been to focus more on the collections. And as I mentioned, in Q4, we've seen uh, definite progress in that, which will help uh, our debt reduction also. Right. Uh, you know, I am looking at your FI23 numbers. You're likely to grow 15% on that in FI24. And your target for the next five years would be about 10 to 15% sort of revenue CAGR. Back of the envelope calculations would suggest that by FI30, you could be anywhere between 25,000 to 27,000 crores on the top line. Would that be a correct assessment? Yes, and that depends on how much we add through the inorganic also. Um, so, depends on how much m and we do it can be even higher. So this 15% uh, is purely organic and thereafter whatever in organic opportunities you get. Correct. And at that level, what would the margins be broadly? We want to stabilize or increase more than the pre-COVID level, which was about the 6%. Six. So, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Wish you good luck for uh, the long-term plans uh, for the company and also we'll be interested in knowing the growth of the elder care vertical that you have embarked upon and the synergies that you're talking about. Wish you good luck for the fourth quarter numbers as well. Okay, with that, take a short break. Come back, tell you more on the other uh, side of the short break where we talk about stocks, individual, uh, uh, you know, news pieces, a bunch of them buzzing around. There's Kolte Patil, there's Vedanta, Bharti Airtel up around a percent and a half as well. You probably get in some comments coming in from the Supreme Court as well, from Ashmit.